Now, we're going to level up just one level, and this is in terms of software, not hardware. I'm still using a Logitech Brio webcam, a ring light, and the El Cheapo, like $100 Jabra Evolve 40 headset. I'm also using that green screen that you saw behind me because now there's a piece of software involved here, Streamlabs OBS, uh, that is letting me lay directly on top of my slides. You can choose how large or small you want to be. Just to show you some of the magic behind here, I'm going to go pull the uh, green screen up. So now you can see how that green screen starts to play into effect. When I pull it back down, it can remove my background way easier. So pull that guy back down. Um, now, so what is this? What's this magical sorcery? So Streamlabs OBS, also known as OBS, there are two different pieces of software there. OBS is the free open source one. Streamlabs OBS is also free. It's just not open source, I don't think. Um, but Streamlabs OBS is what I find easier to use. Uh, if you just handed this to someone who wanted to do presentations, you can expect like a, a one to four hour ramp up time for using OBS or Streamlabs OBS. OBS to get used to figuring out the mechanics of layering yourself on top of your slides. I'm not going to teach you how to do that in OBS. I'm just going to link you to, to uh, webcasts from people who streamers who do this kind of tutorial for a living. Um, so you can make yourself as large or small on top of your slides as you want. This tends to dictate your slide design and the way that you put things on top of the slides because then if you do things like this grid, I'm standing in front of it, I end up stepping aside for when I want to talk about things that are on there. And you end up getting used to doing it like a web or like a weather person where you put your hands across here and you can go see where your hands are at relative to everything else. Uh, so Streamlabs OBS, okay, so the, this, this, these pieces of software, Streamlabs OBS or OBS, what they work with is streaming to Twitch, Facebook, YouTube. Twitch, Facebook, YouTube are the three common ones. You could go over to other platforms like Periscope, uh, but Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube are the ones that people stream to the most. What it doesn't work with is things like Zoom, Skype, GoToWebEx, or GoToWebinar, GoToMeeting, WebEx, any of those meeting platforms that you're used to using, this is not for that. So that's why I talk about this being a different kind of level up, where now you're really doing more public streaming rather than meetings that require registration. This is more, much more about broadcasting -y types of things. There are ways that you can lay yourself on top of your slides in order to work with stuff like Zoom and Skype. I just have found them really awkward and uh, very low resolution compared to the things that I really want, which is a really crisp-like resolution. Speaking of resolutions, so the, I'm wearing a blue uh, hoodie right now. Now, this is one of the gotchas of the $100 or the $400 type streaming setups is watch what happens when I take the blue hoodie off and I switch back to the t-shirt that I've been wearing in uh, some of the other broadcasts. So this uh, I picked up from a vacation in Hawaii, and it's got a mix of blue and green inside of it. You start to have to be very careful about what colors you wear when you're dealing with a cheaper webcam, because cheaper webcams have a much tougher time picking apart your shirt from the green background. Watch what I mean if I pull this thing up it'll start to become more obvious what's happening here is this thing picks up my shirt is essentially somewhat of a green screen. Now it's not perfect. It's uh, you know, can be kind of fuzzy and see-through type things. Um, but so this is why when you start looking at the next level up, the next level up in my streaming setup is going to involve a dramatically better camera that has an easier time picking apart different colors. So more on that in the next level of the streaming setups.